Session number seven, gratitude. Gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. One of my favorite statements is, the enlightened give thanks for what most people take for granted. As one begins to grow, develop, and unfold, and begin to release their gifts within their soul, and begin to understand their intimate at one minute with the power and the presence that governs the universe, they give thanks for everything. They live in a continual state of gratitude. And what is discovered is that the more you're grateful, the universe pours more things for you to be grateful for into your experience. You set up the condition for more abundance by being grateful simply as an attitude, simply as a way of being, simply as a way of thinking. It is a precursor to manifestation and demonstration. Larry James once said that gratitude is faith in action. Now what does that mean? Since faith is the substance, the very living substance of something hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen, you're being grateful before something even shows up in your life. You're having an extreme faith and conviction that is already there before it physically manifests. Individuals who live in that kind of attitude create more and more good in their life because they're not depending upon circumstances and the world of appearances to bring it to them. It is their attitude that's generating the good. You believe that this substance gives you everything you desire, and thirdly, you relate yourself to it through a feeling of deep and profound gratitude. Many people who order their lives rightly in all other ways are kept in poverty by their lack of gratitude. Having received one gift from God, they cut the wires which connect them with Him by failing to make acknowledgment. It's easy to understand that the nearer we live to the source of wealth, the more wealth we shall receive. It is also easy to understand that a soul that is always grateful lives in closer touch with God than one who never looks to Him in thankful acknowledgement. When good things come to us, the more gratefully we fix our minds on the supreme power, the more good we will receive and the more rapidly they will come. The reason for this is simply that the mental attitude of gratitude draws the mind into closer touch with the source from which the blessings come. 
if we would stop, maybe give ourselves some kind of a reminder, put something on our keychain, put a little dot on the dash of our automobile, maybe put it on the mirror for when we're putting on our makeup or shaving, just to remind ourselves to stop and have a quiet moment and be totally grateful for all the good we have and then all the good that's coming. Now, I don't really know about you, but I do know about me. And I know that I am overwhelmed with the good that flows into my life from time to time. And it just seems to keep building and building. We live like Solomon in all his splendor and glory relative to most of the population of the world. When I say we, I'm talking about you and me. You wouldn't even be listening to this if you're in some other parts of the world. We've got it made. We really, truly have. If it's a new thought to you that gratitude brings your whole mind into closer harmony with the creative energies of the universe, consider it well, and you will see that it's true. It is so true, and it's so obvious once you start working with it. The good things you already possess have come to you because of certain laws. Gratitude will lead your mind out along the ways by which things come and it will keep you in close harmony with creative thought and prevent you from falling into the competitive thought. We don't need to compete with anyone. We're dealing with an infinite source of supply. There's a rich storehouse of everything we'll ever want, and it's sitting right in front of us. As we develop this attitude of gratitude, the doors open and it starts to flow. Gratitude alone can keep you looking toward the infinite and prevent you from falling into the error of thinking the supply of riches is limited. And to think that would be fatal to your hopes. Have you any idea just what percentage of the population believe that there is a limited supply? Why do you think people are hustling and working and scheming trying to get a little more of the marketplace because they think that there's only so much. They don't understand. They don't have to. There's an infinite supply. In the Upanishads, it's written, from abundance, he took abundance, and still abundance remained. Now, let me repeat that, and I want you to think of what I'm saying. It's written in the most ancient writings there is, from abundance, he took abundance, and still abundance remained. If you're like most people, if you're like me, when you hear that, you say, no, wait a minute, how could that be? And then you relate to infinite intelligence, to formless substance, to infinite supply, and it starts to make a little sense. I want to suggest right now, you take a very deep breath. Come on, fill your lungs. Actually, fill your lungs and hold it. From abundance, you took abundance. You took the air that surrounds you and you filled your lungs but still abundance remained. So you let the air out of your lungs and then you take it back in. You just freely breathe out and breathe in. You freely breathe out and breathe in. From abundance, you take abundance and still abundance remains. Well, don't you know that the air is made from the same stuff everything else is made from? Or you could say everything is made from the same stuff the air is made from. There is only one formless substance. The only difference between one thing and another is density or amplitude of vibration. Now, the difference between everything else and you is that you have creative faculties. We can dictate the form that formless substance will take. We have the ability to think. We have the ability to imagineer. And you know, the more grateful we become, the more tuned in we become. Now, let's repeat. Gratitude alone can keep you looking toward the infinite and prevent you from falling into the error of thinking that the supply of riches is limited. And to think that would be fatal to our hopes, of course it would. Why? From abundance, he took abundance and still abundance remained. Let's repeat that often every day. There is a law of gratitude. And if you are to get the results you seek, it is absolutely necessary that you should observe this law. The law of gratitude is the natural principle that action and reaction are always equal and in opposite directions. The grateful outreaching of your mind in thankful praise to the supreme power is a liberation or an expenditure of force. It cannot fail to reach that to which it is addressed. And as a result, 
God responds with an instantaneous movement toward you. Draw nigh unto God, and He will draw nigh unto you. Repeat that over a number of times and see what happens in your mind. Go back to the basics where this entire program began. Go back to the quotation from the whites that I shared with you, where he said, Then one day, some trivial experience or word or encounter stops us short. A gleam of illumination penetrates the depths of our consciousness. We see. Usually it is but a glimpse. But on a rare occasion, a brilliant flash reveals truth fully formed, and we marvel that this understanding has escaped us for so long. That's what happens to us when we dwell on this concept of gratitude, when we fill our heart and our mind and our soul and our entire being with the feeling of gratitude. We want to be grateful for everything that we've got. Just be grateful for the fact that you can comprehend what I'm sharing with you right now. And if your gratitude is strong and constant, the reaction in the formless substance will be strong and continuous. The movement of the things you want will always be toward you. Notice the grateful attitude that Jesus took, how he always seems to be saying, I thank thee, Father, that thou hearest me. You cannot exercise much power without gratitude. Now think about that. You cannot exercise much power without gratitude because it is gratitude that keeps you connected with power. But the value of gratitude does not consist solely in getting more blessings in the future. Without gratitude, you cannot keep from being displeased with the things as they are. The moment you permit your mind to dwell with displeasure upon things as they are, you begin to lose ground. They who have will receive more. They who have not will lose even what they've got. If you focus on what's wrong, you're going to get more of it. And if you focus on what's right, you're going to get more of that. You fix your attention upon the common, the poor, the squalid, and the mean, and your mind takes the form of these things. You will then transmit these forms or mental images to the formless. Thus, the common, the poor, the squalid, and the mean will come to you. To permit your mind to dwell upon the inferior is to become inferior and to surround yourself with inferior things. On the other hand, to fix your attention on the best is to surround yourself with the best and to become the best. We are choosing just the very best in life, and life will give us the very best. Choose nothing but the best for yourself. Really analyze what I'm talking about here for a moment. Have you ever noticed how some people will buy a gift for someone else that they wouldn't buy for themselves? You'll hear them say, oh, I couldn't spend all that on me. You've got to learn to love yourself. Wrap your arms around your body right now. Just wrap your arms around your body right now and give yourself a hug. Take your hand and kiss it. Wake up every morning and feel this way about yourself. Just be grateful for the fact that you are you, that you know who you are. We've got to love ourselves. Now, I'm not talking about conceit. I'm talking about a healthy, conscious awareness of who and what we are. If we don't love ourselves, we're not going to have it to give to someone else. You can't give what you haven't got. Think of how fortunate we are. The creative power within us makes us into the image of that which we give our attention. We are thinking substance, and thinking substance always takes the form of that which it thinks about. Do you know, that's probably one of the most powerful statements we will ever hear or see. Let me repeat it. The creative power within us makes us into the image of that to which we give our attention. We are thinking substance, and thinking substance always takes the form of that which it thinks about. The grateful mind is constantly fixed upon the best. Do you know what that means? When your mind is not fixed upon the best, you're not in a grateful energy. You're not in a grateful vibration. If something's bothering you, you're not full of gratitude. Why? Well, this is very clear. The grateful mind is always fixed upon the best. It's constantly fixed upon the best. 
Therefore, it tends to become the best. It takes the form or character of the best, and it will receive the best. Also, faith is born of gratitude. The grateful mind continually expects good things, and expectation becomes faith. The reaction of gratitude upon one's own mind produces faith. Every outgoing wave of grateful thanksgiving increases faith. The person who has no feeling of gratitude cannot long retain a living faith. And as we'll see in the following segments of this program, without a living faith, you cannot get rich by the creative method. It is necessary then to cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good that comes to you, to give thanks continuously. And because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude. Do not waste time thinking or talking about the shortcomings or wrong actions of the plutocrats or the trust magnets. Their organization of the world has made your opportunity. All you have received really has come to you because of them. Do not rage against corrupt politicians. If it were not for politicians, we should all fall into anarchy, and your opportunity would be greatly lessened. God has worked a long time and very patiently to bring us up to where we are in industry and government, and he is going to go right on with his work. I believe that he will do away with the plutocrats, the trust magnets, the captains of industry, and politicians as soon as they can be spared. But in the meantime, they are very necessary. Remember, that they are helping to arrange the lines of transmission along which your riches will come to you. Be grateful to them. This will bring you into harmonious relationship with the good in everything, and the good in everything will move toward you. Do you realize that everything that has happened in your life, I mean everything that has happened in your life right up to this moment, has been absolutely essential to make you the person you are to prepare you to the good that's going to come to you? I remember one time watching a TV show. It was a show in America, and it was a few years ago. It was on the Johnny Carson show. Johnny Carson had George Carlin sitting in for him. And Vincent Price was a guest on the show, the movie actor. George Carlin asked Vincent Price, Well, Vincent, how do you think this new series is going to be? You see, Vincent Price had just shot a pilot of a series that he was out on the talk shows promoting, hoping that everybody would watch it and they would have a successful series on television. Everybody would earn a lot of money, the advertisers would sell a lot of product, and everything would be great. And so Carlin asked Price, he said, tell us about this new series. And Vincent said, oh, he says, I think the people are going to love it. He said, it's about a train. And this is a different kind of a train. And he said, I'm the conductor on the train. And he said, when you buy a ticket on this train, you buy a ticket to go backward in your life. And you go back to a point where you would like to start over. And when you get to that point, you pull the cord And as the conductor, I stop the train and I let you off and your life can start over there. And Vincent says, I think everybody would like to go back and start over at some point, don't you? George Carlin sat there and he stared off into space and he said, no, I don't think so. And, you know, when he said that, you could just see this pilot going right down the tube. The executive producers must have been tearing their hair out. They'd know that this wasn't going to fly. And he said, If I went back and changed anything in my life, then I wouldn't be me. And he said, I like me. And I thought, wow, is that ever good? And you know, I thought of things in my life that were rather unpleasant. They weren't happy times. I would imagine you've had times like that in your life. I think everyone has. And you know, there's times when we wish maybe those things hadn't happened or we hadn't done it or we hadn't gone there or whatever it was. But you know something? If we could remove any of them, we wouldn't be who we are. Now, I don't know about you, but I like me. I'm grateful for being me. I like the things that are coming into my life. I like the people in my life. I like the things I'm doing. I'm excited about what I'm going to do. I am just recording this program now for you. 
I'm sitting here with a very dear friend of mine, Wolfgang Sonnenberg, who's going to be doing this in German for the people in Germany. I'm grateful for his presence. I'm grateful for his talent. And I'm grateful for all the people that are going to come and learn from that program. You want to be grateful for every little thing that's happened in your life. Just give thanks. You know, my young grandson, Danny, said something the other day that is absolutely brilliant. He said, you know, Grandpa, if we attract what we expect, we should never expect anything but the best. <laughs> I said, yeah, you got it, Dan, you got it. Just think that way. Well, let's be quiet for a moment as this session comes to a close. And let's fill our mind with gratitude. Remember, from abundance, he took abundance, and still abundance remained. I am so grateful that God inspired Rhonda Byrne to make the secret. And the secret has brought you to me and me to you. And that we can now take this and share it with someone else. And let's teach them to be grateful that they come into our life and we come into their life. Think of all the things that you've got to be grateful for. Thank God for all the good that's coming and expect an abundance in the future. Now that we have taken a moment to really be grateful for all the good we have and all that's coming, Let's be grateful for these questions that come with this particular segment of the program. Here's the first one. What are the three steps by which you enter into relationship with the supreme power? Number two, explain why and how gratitude keeps you in close touch with God. Number three, explain the operation of the law of action and reaction. Number four, why should you fix your mind on the best? Number five, explain the relation between gratitude and faith. And finally, number six, explain why and how all things are good. And when you have those questions answered and you go to the exercise that comes with this particular segment on gratitude, you're going to find that when he said, people who order their lives rightly in all areas are kept in poverty because of their lack of gratitude. Having received one gift from God, they cut the ties that connect them to God by failing to make acknowledgement. He went on to say that in contrast, it's easy to understand that the nearer we live to and acknowledge the source of wealth, the more wealth we shall receive. Waddles makes another great point further in the session when he says, Permitting your mind to dwell upon the inferior is to become inferior and to surround yourself with inferior things. On the other hand, to fix your attention on the best is to surround yourself with the best and to become the best. The creative power within us makes us into the image of that to which we give our attention. He reminds us once again that we are a thinking substance, and thinking substance always takes the form of that which it thinks about. The grateful mind is constantly fixed upon the best. Therefore, it tends to become the best. It takes the form or character of the best and will receive the best. As I explained in the movie The Secret, I'm always grateful for all that I have in my life. I have a magnificent home. 
I have a tremendous wife. I love spending time with my family. And I absolutely love what I do in my business every single day. I have the best. And much to my surprise, it just keeps getting better. But the point is this. You see, I was grateful when I had no home, no wife, no family, and no business. You see, it doesn't matter where you are in life. There's a reason right now to express gratitude. Have you ever visited a third world country? Well, I've been to some of the poorest areas in Mexico, India, all over Asia and Africa, where people have no electricity, no running water, no refrigeration, no lights, no heat, very little medicine, no telephones, not much of anything really. It makes me appreciate all I have so much more. We all have so much to be grateful for, our health, our friends, great teachers, Think of this, 500 channels of television, safe drinking water, great books to read. We've got great food, pets who love us, people who believe in us, the beauty of nature. There are literally a million reasons to express gratitude. Recently, I decided to make a list of everything I was grateful for. I had scheduled 30 minutes to do it. After 30 minutes, I had filled 15 pages in my journal and still had more to write, but I had to get out of bed and go to work. So start now and just do it every day. Get in the habit of it. Write out a new gratitude list every day. You can do it at night or you can say it in the shower in the morning. You can say it out loud or you can write it down. But the key is to take time and acknowledge what you're grateful for. And if you do, you'll notice that in a few days, your list begins to grow longer and longer. And what a change in attitude that'll create for you. And that's where attraction finds its way to you because the law is this. The more you're grateful for, the more you'll be given to be grateful for.